Hey guys, figured I'd go live tonight with uh, part three of the uh, rarest uh, jazz albums that I have in my library. Uh, you guys certainly seem to like the first two, uh, Prestige and then the uh, the early Blue Note series. Um, so part three tonight is actually going to be um, the Blue Note 4100 series. We left off with 4000, so tonight I'll do uh, 4100. I have most of the albums in the 4100 series, but the ones that I'm going to show tonight are just the ones that I have that are originals. Um, got a pretty good stack here, so um, we'll go ahead and get into it. I'm going to do these in catalog order, starting at 4101 and going up through 4199. So um, first one here is one of my all-time favorite Blue Note records, period. This is a gorgeous copy. This is uh, Donald Byrd's uh, Royal Flush. This is 4101, first one in the series. Um, the thing that really makes this session fun is uh, Pepper Adams on baritone. I love baritone sax. Big Jerry Mulligan fan here. Uh, love Pepper Adams. So uh, great to hear uh, a horn line here with, uh, with Donald Byrd and Pepper Adams. It's really great. Um, okay, next one up is, let's see, so this is one of a numerous uh, Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers. Uh, this one is Buhena's Delight, and uh, great, great lineup of the Messengers here. This is uh, Freddie Hubbard on trumpet, Wayne Shorter on tenor sax, and Curtis Fuller on trombone. Not sure you can get a much better horn line than that. And then uh, rhythm section is Cedar Walton piano, uh, Jimmy Merritt on bass, and Art Blakey, of course, on drums. Uh, this particular copy you can see right here was uh, property of uh, WPTF Radio in Raleigh, North Carolina, which is uh, the area in which I live. So uh, kind of cool to have a have a local piece of Raleigh history as well. Um, all right, next up, this is forty one oh six. Uh, this is Jackie McLean's Let Freedom Ring. Um, I would, I probably wouldn't put this in my top three of his Blue Note records, but probably definitely top five, top six. Um, it, really, really good. Um, <clears throat> let's see, the, uh, the band here is, so this is just a sax quartet. It's McLean on alto and then uh, Walter Davis on piano, uh, Herbie Lewis on bass and Billy Higgins on drums. So, um, okay. And then, let's see. Hey, Josh, good evening. Thanks, uh, thanks for showing up here and uh, glad you've been enjoying the videos. Uh, hope you like this one as well. So, thanks. All right. Next up, this is some damn fine soul jazz right here. 4107, Don Wilkerson's Preach Brother. Love this record to pieces. Uh, this has uh, Don Wilkerson on tenor, Grant Green on guitar, and then uh, Sonny Clark on piano and Butch Warren on bass and Billy Higgins on drums. Killer band, killer tunes. Ugh. Whenever, I, uh, whenever I'm in the mood for soul jazz, this one's, uh, this one's on the short list. All right. <clears throat> Uh, what else we got here? Okay, here's a uh, here's an original copy of uh, Herbie Hancock's debut uh, as a band leader from uh, 1963, I believe. This is uh, Watermelon or uh, Taken Off, rather. It has Watermelon Man on it. You can see it's got the hype sticker attached to the to the jacket. So uh, helping this uh, legend out on his first uh, on his first leader record was. Uh, Freddie Hubbard on trumpet, Dexter Gordon on tenor sax. So there's your good horn section. And then uh, Herbie Hancock, obviously, on piano. Uh, Butch Warren on bass and Billy Higgins on drums. Billy Higgins was a uh, was definitely a mainstay of uh, especially the early uh, Blue Note 4100 series. So um, good to see him on a bunch of sessions. Um, <clears throat> all right, next up is uh, 4110, uh, Horace Silver's uh, Tokyo Blues. Uh, this is good stuff. Um, so this has, let's see, Blue Mitchell on trumpet, Junior Cook on tenor, and then, uh, your rhythm section of Horace Silver, Gene Taylor on bass and John Harris Jr. on drums. Um, this is probably one of, uh, one of Horace Silver's better Blue Note records, uh, well, so better later Blue Note records. Um, I've always really enjoyed this. 
So, um, all right, let's see. Ah, this one is really cool. This copy is gorgeous, except for the fact that it's got call letters on it. WHAM radio in Rochester, New York. Um, so WHAM is a 50,000 watt AM radio station. Um, uh, you can hear them across most of the Eastern U S and Canada at night. <clears throat> and, um, this particular copy was, uh, due to a DJ named Harry Abraham, who, um, who had a uh, jazz show overnight on WHAM between 1969, 1978. And, um, so, he would, uh, you know, take many a night owl and overnight trucker and student to school on jazz every night. And uh, sadly, the guy kind of went off the deep end uh, after he lost his radio show. And he uh, served some time for robbery, for robbing a bank and all this, and then got into cybersecurity later on before he died. Uh, but anyway, uh, Dexter Gordon's Go is just a, a killer album, top to bottom. Um, it's got, uh, so this is another sax quartet, uh, Dexter Gordon with a rhythm section of Sonny Clark, Butch Warren's and Billy Higgins, Butch Warren rather and Billy Higgins. Um, so highly recommended. And it's very cool to think that this copy may have been played to a majority of the, uh, Eastern U S and Canada at some point in time. So that's, uh, that's pretty slick. Um, and we got, uh, next up some more good soul jazz here. Uh, Freddie Roach. Down to Earth, this has uh, Percy France on tenor, Kenny Burrell on guitar, and then uh, Freddie Roach on organ, of course, and uh, Clarence Johnston on drums. Um, and um, so if you like soul jazz, that's a good one. Um, yeah, Josh, you know, I've tried, and, it, and it's a laminated cover, but unfortunately that was done on a permanent marker. It was done with a Marks-A-Lot marker, and I did the um, – I did the uh, – what am I thinking? The magic eraser to get it out. And some of it came off, it faded, but in the end, um, it had just been there so long that it had seeped through the laminate. So there was only so much that I could do. Um, so it did fade a little bit, but, uh, unfortunately it's not going to come off without some serious damage to the cover. So I'm just going to leave it. And, you know, in that particular case, I don't really mind because it's just a, a really cool little nugget of history, if you know what I mean. So, um, all right. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Now we're cooking. So uh, Jimmy Smith, back at the Chicken Shack. Uh, this is Essential 4100 series. Um, everybody should have a copy of this. So good. Um, you know, a lot of people shit on Jimmy Smith, but um, especially in his early days, Jimmy Smith made possible all of the... Uh, all of the uh, Blue Note albums that we all know and love because in the early days, Jimmy Smith was Blue Note's best-selling artist and he was literally paying their bills uh, at that time. So if you uh, like any other Blue Note album, especially from you know the 50s and even early 60s, you can thank Jimmy Smith for, uh, for doing more than his share to uh, pay the bills and make those possible. All right, this next one is an all-time jazz great. Yeah, Josh, uh, you know, the story behind it is is definitely cool. Um, so, yeah, like I said, you know, in that particular case, I, I don't really mind having the, you know, the, I, I mean, the call letters are ugly across the top or, you know, across the front cover. But it, it's OK. You know, when when you combine it with the story, it, it all just kind of works together. So. Um, all right. So, like I said, one of the all time great jazz records, Kenny Burrell's Midnight Blue. If you want to get a rock person into jazz, this is the one you start with. Um, especially when you inform them that uh, if they've ever heard Stevie Ray Vaughn covering Chitlin's Con Carne, the original's right here. So Kenny Burrell is one of the all-time great jazz guitarists, and this is one of the best albums he ever recorded, hands down. So cannot go wrong with uh, with Midnight Blue. Um, <clears throat> all right, what's the next one? Okay, so this one people are uh, kind of hit or miss on. This is uh, Donald Byrd's New Perspective. Um, you know, this one has voice on it. A lot of people don't like vocal jazz, but the voices, they add something to this. This is this is more than just a jazz record. It's sort of a statement. It's uh, it's a societal statement. It's a, 
it's a political statement, I think, in a lot of ways. And um, so this is, uh, yeah, this this one's not everybody's cup of tea, but I've uh, I, I I enjoy it. Um, and anybody who says that they can separate politics and jazz is kind of missing the point because jazz and politics go hand in hand. Um, all right, but we don't need to get into that. <laughs> All right, next up, great soul jazz session from the one and only Lou Donaldson. And if there is a more aptly titled Blue Note album, well, there might be one or two. But this one, Good Gracious, cover uh, by today's standards is probably a little creepy. But, uh, man, the band and the tunes, <whistles> Lou Donaldson on alto, Grant Green on guitar, John pa Big John Patton on organ, and Ben Dixon on drums. Dude. The only thing that's good gracious about this record is the music, because trust me, after after five, ten minutes, that's exactly what you're going to be saying. Good gracious. There is the, the music on that one is just absolutely fantastic. OK, what's up next? Uh, yeah, OK. Another uh, another Horace Silver. This is uh, Silver Serenade. So this is uh, let's see. Blue Mitchell on trumpet, Junior Cook on tenor. And then uh, your rhythm section of Horace Silver, Gene Taylor on bass, and Roy Brooks on drums. Uh, this one is solidly middle of the road, I think, for uh, for Silver. You know, definitely not uh, his best, but uh, probably not the worst thing he ever did either. So, <clears throat> yes, that is a great record, Josh. You are correct about that. All right, this one. Um, this one is an all-time favorite of mine as well. This is uh, Dexter Gordon's "A Swing and Affair." This is a pretty good, uh, pretty good play copy. Um, so this one is uh, another saxophone quartet. Dexter Gordon, of course, on sax, and then uh, Sonny Clark, Butch Warren, and Billy Higgins again. So there you go. Uh, these guys were, as a rhythm section, those guys were all over the forty-one hundred series. All right. <clears throat> What do we got here? Okay, so next up, as far as Grant Green's Blue Note sessions go, this one I think people are pretty lukewarm on. You know, people like it but don't love it. I'd, I'd say I'm probably in the same camp as well. This is Am I Blue? Um, so this has a uh, good horn section, uh, Johnny Coles and Joe Henderson, and then uh, your rhythm section is Grant Green, uh, Big John Patton, and Ben Dixon. Um, so, you know, it's, it's good. I, I, I would firmly classify myself as, you know, like it, but don't love it. Um, all right. This one is one of the all time greats as well. And probably one of my favorite, um, uh, Reed Miles album covers as well. Uh, Hank Mobley's no room for squares. Um, this thing is all fire front to back, top to bottom. Uh, there's not a bad moment on this. And, um, you know, that, I mean, how cool does Hank Mobley look right there i mean it's just you know i i love yeah i just absolutely love this cover i mean i love the type setting i love the uh you know the the whole no room for squares thing and and doing the whole square theme and th this was just a brilliant album cover and and the music lives up to it as well um all right so it's kind of cool doing this live i'm uh i'm enjoying this it's uh it keeps me uh, on my toes a little bit, too. It keeps me from talking too much. Um, all right. Next up, this guy uh, only recorded two albums as a leader for Blue Note. Both of them are in this stack. But uh, this first one, this is uh, Gratian Monkier the third. This one's Evolution. This is probably the more accessible of the two. Um, if you don't like your jazz too far out there, this one is uh, definitely going to be more your cup of tea. Um very good. Great band, too. Lee Morgan, Jackie McLean, Bobby Hutcherson, Bob Crenshaw, or Bob Cranshaw, rather, and uh, Tony Williams, who, God, couldn't have been more than 17 or 18 on this session. And then um, this was the biggest selling Blue Note album of all time, at least up to this point. Um, I believe uh, Nora Jones' Come Away With Me probably, uh, probably took that over. But uh, here's Lee Morgan's The Sidewinder. This had a major league hit. The title track was was a huge, huge hit. Um, well, at least by Blue Note standards. And um, in uh, in some ways, this uh, actually spelled the beginning of uh, of the end of the Alfred Lyon and 
uh, Francis Wolf era before they uh, sold it to Liberty, but that's a, a story for another time. Um, great record, essentially, Morgan. Um, okay. And then next up, uh, I've got uh, Andrew Hill, Smokestack. Uh, this one is good, too. Uh, Andrew Hill is another one. Sometimes he got a little out there. This stuff is not out there at all. This is uh, totally fantastic, even if you're more of a straight-ahead kind of person. So, um, yeah, can't recommend this one enough. It's very, very good. Um, <clears throat> let's see. There's a good one. So this one is a little out there, but it's not as bad as people make it out to be. I actually flat out love this record. Eric Dolphy out to lunch. Um, there is so much great material on this. Um, you know, it's, it's got a great band, too. I mean, Freddie Hubbard plays trumpet. Uh, Eric Dolphy's playing alto, flute, and bass clarinet, which is what you would expect from him. And then uh, you got your rhythm section, Bobby Hutcherson on vibes, Richard Davis on bass, and a very young Tony Williams on drums. Um, this is one of those records that everyone should listen to at least once. You know, you're going to hear people say that this is the most brilliant thing they've ever heard, which I don't necessarily agree with either. But then you'll have other people that just say that this is complete, utter shit. But it's it's one of those records that it's so polarizing that everybody should listen to it at least once and make your own choice. You'll it's it's fair to say, though, that you'll probably either love it or hate it. You're not going to walk away with it going. eh, It's OK. You know, you're you're going to have a strong opinion about it one way or the other. All right. Jackie McLean's Destination Out is fantastic. So this actually has Gratian Moncure the third as a um, as a sideman. Uh, on trombone and then uh, Jackie McLean on alto and then your rhythm section is uh, vibes from Bobby Hutcherson and then uh, Larry Ridley on bass and the one and only legend Roy Haynes on drums. Uh, that guy, I heard he could play. I've heard he was pretty good. Um, all right. Hey, good evening, Jeffrey. Thanks for joining. Appreciate it. Um. <clears throat> All right, next up, what do we got here? Okay, so this is another one that uh, people either love or hate. Uh, I'm I, I'm more into the love. I'm, I'm more on the love side of the fence. This is uh, Freddie Roach, Brown Sugar. Uh, this has vocals on it, which kills it for some people, but I don't mind it. Um, and then let's see here. Oh, yeah. This is one of the all-time greats, too, from Lee Morgan. Search for the New Land. Um, this is another one that is just complete fire, front to back. Uh, there is not a bad moment to be found here. Um, the atmosphere, just the sound of it is incredible. Uh, Rudy Van Gelder did an amazing job recording this, and it it's one of those records that you just need to sit and immerse yourself in, and it will absolutely blow you away. It's so good. Um, okay, let's see what else we got cooking here in this stack. So we're at uh, 4169. So we're getting there. Okay. Next up, we have another uh, Art Blakey album. This is uh, Free For All. And uh, this has a fantastic uh, lineup as well. So this is uh, Freddie Hubbard, Curtis Fuller, and Wayne Shorter for your uh, horn section. And then your rhythm section is Cedar Walton, uh, bleh, excuse me, Cedar Walton, Reginald Workman, and uh, Art Blakey. So good stuff. Um, let's see here. This is one of my all time favorites. If you're like me and you grew up as a kid in the uh, late 80s, early 90s, you were listening to pop radio at all at that time. Uh, you will probably remember the uh, song that was, uh, it was actually released on blue note. It was uh, the song cantaloupe flip Fantasia by uh, us three. They sampled a whole bunch of blue note records in this, but the uh, primary, um, the primary sample was uh, Herbie Hancock's piano and Freddie Hubbard's trumpet from the song cantaloupe Island on this Empyrean Isles. Uh, Imperian Isles, uh, perfect 10 as far as I'm concerned. Uh, this record's absolutely killer. Uh, it's got uh, 
three fifths of Miles Davis's second great quintet. So here you got Herbie Hancock, Ron Carter, and Tony Williams, and then uh, Freddie Hubbard's playing trumpet. So this is a uh, this is a tr well, I guess technically Freddie Hubbard plays cornet, but still, it's basically trumpet. Um, and yeah, so this is uh, another one trumpet quartet records. People just didn't buy; they didn't like them. And man. The good ones are super hard to find because they just sold like shit. Um, okay, what else we got here? Okay, so here's the other um, the other leader album that uh, that Gratian Moncure the Third recorded for uh, Blue Note. This is called Some Other Stuff. This one's a little more out there. If you have an open mind and you can listen to this and enjoy it, I think you will. Um, Check it out. If you like evolution, check this out. It might surprise you. This one, this one is the more interesting one for me and probably the one I listen to the most. So. <clears throat> All right, we're coming, coming to the uh, end of the stack here, but got, uh, got a few more goodies here. This one, this is another one of my all time favorite uh, Blue Note album covers. Jackie McLean's It's Time. Just love those exclamation points. I don't know. There's just something cool about sitting and staring at it. It's it's neat. Uh, so this one has uh, Charles Tolliver and Jackie McLean for your horn section. And then your uh, piano is Herbie Hancock. Uh, bass is Cecil McBee. And drums is, again, uh, the legend Roy Haynes. So... <clears throat> All right, these are like impossible to find. I don't really understand why they're so hard to find, but man, they are. Um, sorry, my cat was trying to play with a uh, cable. So um, this is uh, Kenny Dorham's Trompeta Toccata and um, killer record, but man, originals are stupid hard to find. I got really lucky on this one. This is a uh, this is a great play copy. You know, jacket's a little faded and stuff, but um, you know, there's no writing on the back or anything. So um, and and the vinyl plays wonderfully. So this is what I call a, a great Sean copy. It's not a uh, not a collector quality copy, but it displays well and it plays good. That's all I care about. So um, this is uh, this one is is a heavy one as well. Uh, this is uh, Wayne Shorter's Juju. Uh, this is probably my favorite Wayne Shorter album, Pound for Pound, that he did for Blue Note. Uh, very, very good. And then, um, let's see. All right, next up, this was another uh, good size hit for Blue Note. Um, the title track, Song for My Father by Horace Silver. This is probably one of my favorite all-time favorite of his blue note albums uh there's so much good stuff on this it's not even funny never mind the the title track that uh that most people know because steely dan straight up ripped it off uh in the 70s but uh, yeah i digress <clears throat> okay two more so this one is another fire fire album from hank mobley uh the turnaround man this thing if you can if you can sit and listen to this and not get tendonitis in your foot from tapping along, you are a better man than I, sir. Very, very good. And last but not least, we're going to have Lee Morgan close it out with the final one in the series, forty-one ninety-nine, The Rump Roller. This one is just banging. Uh, Lee Morgan on trumpet, Joe Henderson on tenor. And then your rhythm section of Ronnie Matthews, piano, Victor Sproles on bass. And here he is again, Billy Higgins on drums. So um, this is an essential Lee Morgan album as far as I'm concerned. And that's what I've got. So I hope to uh, do a 4200 video here in the next few days, uh, time permitting. And then um, after that, I think I'll move on to Riverside and Impulse and uh, maybe a few other surprises down the road. So... We'll, uh, we'll see how it goes, but um, 
anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. And, uh, you know, if you're catching the replay, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Thanks to everybody who uh, showed up to watch this live. Very much appreciate it. If you would uh, subscribe and like, I'd certainly appreciate that as well. So uh, everybody have a great evening and uh, thanks. I'll talk to you guys again soon.